Hi, today's book is called Myself and My Aims by Kurt Schwitters. Now this book is a collection of writings by the artist named Kurt Schwitters. This is a collection of published and some unpublished works by Kurt Schwitters. He was a painter, he was a poet, he was a typographer, he was a designer, he was a collage artist. Here's some examples of his collage. He was born in Hanover in 1887 and he's been associated with the Dadaist groups. And in one of the essays in this book, he distinguishes himself from the Dadaists and he, and he invented a word that describes what he's doing and that's called Mertz. When you first start studying art, most people read these general all-purpose textbooks about art and you get a little bit of a description of what they do. Another type of art book if, is one like a monograph of an artist and that's where another person interprets their art, maybe for a museum exhibit. And then another type of book is a biography and we live in a golden age of artist biographies. In the last 50 years have been just May, very many artist biographies that I treasure. They're just excellent artist biographies out there. Now this book is a rare type of book because it's a collection of original writings by Kurt Schwitters. This is what scholars use to write their books. In our case, these are valuable because we can read the original words of the artist and we can form our own opinions on what the artist is doing. So there's no overall narrative in this book. It's a, a bunch of usually one page or two page essays, some that were published and some that were unpublished. But you get an idea of the person of who Kurt Schwitters is. When I think of putting together this book, it, m it must be very difficult to do because for an artist like him, I don't know where all these writings came from. I would imagine some are in museums, some are in private collections. The, the editor has to research all that, get an inventory of everything he wrote. Then they have to communicate with the people who are in charge of the documents. They have to translate them. Then they have to get them approved for publishing. So when I think about the whole process of how to make a book like this, I'm just amazed that anyone would want to do it. It's very tedious work. Some of the ones in the beginning are him defending himself about abs being an abstract artist. He was trained in the academic manner and did portraits, but then he moved into abstract art and there was a lot of criticism and he defended himself cr against these criticisms. It is interesting when artists, when they describe what they're doing. They're not always helpful when an artist talks about their method because it's very hard to describe how art is made. He's very sincere in his attempt to describe his method and he was really being attacked as being a crazy person. He mocks his attackers and that's commendable. He has one statement, he says, the critical person judges in order to learn, the critic condemns in order to preach. So there's, there's essays here on Dadaism and painting. He did some kind of uh, Mertz performances. He defines how abstract art is inevitable for his generation of artists. Every generation has different things that they want to express and abstract art was one of, that was his generation. He was a painter, but then he transitioned into working for the government and he was a typographer and a designer for the governments in Germany. So he was producing these official documents and he made them beautiful. You know, most official uh, government documents are very plain, but he designed them really well and was using innovative fonts and design. There's one essay that I thought was humorous where he, he goes kind of on a rant against uppercase le letters. 
You know, he's like, why do we need uppercase letters? Whenever I type, I have to press shift and then the letter. It's an extra movement. It would be better if we eliminated uppercase letters. And I was thinking, you know, at the beginning of a sentence, we use an uppercase letter. Well, you know it's the beginning of a sentence because it's at the beginning of a paragraph. Or you know the previous sentence ended with a period, so you know it's a new sentence, so why do you need an uppercase letter? We capitalize in names of cities, proper nouns. We usually know it's a name. If I write the word Julie, everybody knows it's a name. Why do you have to have an uppercase? If I write the word Hugo, everybody knows that's a name. If I write New York, if I write Cincinnati, you know it's a city, so why does it have to be uppercase? It's kind of a funny rant, but I like the idea that he was examining everything and questioning these traditional ways of seeing the world. There's an essay here on the subtle differences between um, art made by women and art made by men, which is very good. And there's one here about design. He talks about the font Futura. Now, the font Futura was designed by Paul Renner in 1927, and he wrote this essay in 1930, three years after the font was made. And that was a really revolutionary font, way more advanced for its time. The popularity of Futura has steadily grown into this day where it's extremely popular. And here's some examples of people who use Futura font. I was very impressed that he saw that font and he celebrated that font. He knew it was an amazing font. It's very beautiful font. It's very uh, useful. It communicates well. The fact that he did that at the in 1930, just it's a prophetic message. He designed his own font. When he was a poet, he was very interested in the sounds that come out of our mouths. Letters and language are a translation of the sounds that come out of our mouths into a visual form. He created a font that was, he calls a phonetic font where the letters uh, correspond to the sounds that are made when you enunciate that letter. So it's an interesting book. It's certainly just for you know people who are interested in art. And if you are, you're gonna treasure this book. I really enjoyed it.